Hello and welcome back to this channel. Thank you for coming back to another of my like a chatty, very much uh, relaxed style of video. It's not like a sit down, I haven't prepared a script or not that I ever prepare a script but I haven't got an idea of what I'm really going to talk about except for the fact that I'm on call for three mamas at the moment and I popped it into my Instagram, you know, would you be interested, would you be curious in knowing what being on call as a birth and postpartum doula looks like? What sort of support do I offer? How do I manage on call life? And I got so many of you who are like, uh, yes, please. So this particular video is going to be like a chatty vlog style, kind of bringing you through some of the things that I do to prepare, some of the bits and pieces that I do to manage on call life, um, just to make it that little bit easier. When I, I will say that when I first became a doula, it was not this straightforward. I spent an awful lot of my time just being worried, being anxious that my phone would go off and that like I wouldn't be ready, that I would be late, that I would miss, miss the baby being born, that I would spend too long getting myself organized and not enough time being in the car and getting ready to go or that I wouldn't have my phone on loud and that I would forget it or I'd miss a call or I'd be too far away. So I spent a lot of my time being anxious about being on call. Now, like well over a couple of hundred babies later um 10 years almost 10 years in like healthcare and supporting women in pregnancy and birth i can say that i no longer worry about being on call yes i'm like aware of it but i'm not anxious in the way that i was and so some of these things will help you if you have it just arrived in the doula world if you are working in healthcare and just always a little bit curious about how doulas do it this is the video for you. Normally I talk about trying to conceive pregnancy, birth and postpartum, but this is going to be a little bit about my work life. So if you're interested in this kind of video and this style of video, do make sure and hit that little like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my next videos. And let's dive right into a little bit about the life of being on call as a birth doula. So before I dive into my tips and tricks and how some of the ways that I move through my days in order to be a better doula, a more efficient doula, a more thoughtful doula, um, a doula who is less stressed and less anxious about being on call and able to both be present with her family and her clients at the same time. I thought I would share with you what it looks like, that full continuity of care, that journey from when you first meet your doula to meeting your baby, to what that being on call looks like, and that postnatal period and ending that journey with the family. And so it all begins where uh, you or someone else will reach out to me, either by email, um, maybe they've taken one of my birth prep classes, my comfort measures classes, my preparing to breastfeed classes, maybe they've sent me a DM on Instagram, maybe a friend has recommended me to them. Um, and then they will touch base with me and they will say, hey, I'm pregnant. I really want a doula. Will you be my doula? <laughs> Something along those lines. One of the first things that I ask is when is your estimated due date or your guest date to make sure that I'm free, that I'm available and that I'm not like out of the country and I'm not overbooked. I don't like to overbook myself. Um, I found that like anything over four is just like way too much uh, being due at the same time. I just don't like the risk of not being able to attend your birth. So I will make sure that that works out well. I will also ask where you are. I like to stay somewhere within the the vicinity of like one to two hours away from my clients. Um, two hours being maximum, particularly if it's not your first baby, because these babies can come real fast, particularly if they're in a really good position. We've done a lot of spinning babies, a lot of optimizing baby's position and making sure mum's body is really in balance there. And so those would be two big questions. And then if both of those are good, if I've got availability, I'm not away, I'm on my holidays and I'm within a decent time uh, frame from you, then what happens is we, I offer you a free doula call. And in that call, we are chatting through some questions that you might have. We are looking at what me being your doula might look like but also we're sussing out if we're a good fit hiring a doula is such a big deal birthing your baby is such a big deal and you need to make sure that the person that you are 
being supported by, who is holding space for you and advocating for you, makes you feel loved, cared for, and safe above all. And so if you don't feel like you could be stuck in a lift with your doula for 24 hours, or if you feel like maybe this is like too intimate of a per or too personal of a thing for you to be sharing with them. You feel like, okay, I know we haven't built up that rapport yet, but I can't even imagine you being in that space with that intimate space with me. I'm not the right person for you. I always recommend my clients go off after meeting me and interview at least two other doulas. And if they come back to me and they're like, you're still my person, fantastic. I will often refer a lot of my clients to go and like follow me on Instagram just to get an idea of the sort of person that I am to make sure that we have a similar energy, a similar outlook. I very much like, you know, um, yeah, I like to make sure that we're a really good fit from the outset because it's such a big deal. Um, from there on out, I, if they say, yes, okay, you are the person, they will look at the packages that I offer. As a minimum package, I like to see my clients at least twice prenatally, so as before their baby arrives. Generally, one of those sessions is just us getting to know each other, maybe her asking some questions. Always the partner will be there and always will be um, involved in all of these discussions um, where possible. And we'll talk about, you know, how they envisage their birth going, what sort of birth preparation have they done. We do a lot about... Um, managing expectations, a little bit of birth planning, planning for A, B, C and D scenarios. We look at where you envisage yourself laboring, looking at the house, looking at what the setup is like, looking at what that postpartum period is going to look like. So at least two in-person client visits, house visits. So seeing what their space looks like and um, getting to meet other pets, if they've got other kids, making sure that you're building that connection with the partner as well, because your job is not to take over from the partner, but to work with them. You are working with the family, not um, taking over their role. That's really important. And one of the big questions that I get is, you know, when I have partners who are maybe resistant to the idea of a doula. So that's really important to note. Um, and then in, in between that, if mum is having any concerns or worries, I will do a Zoom call or we will do like lots of like WhatsApp voice notes. I feel like that's a really good way to like build up connection, particularly if I have a really late booker. So minimum of two visits in person, if not heaps more. And um, it depends on the case, it depends on how close they are, it depends on how many fears or worries they have coming up, how anxious they are. Um, whether this is their first baby or not and um, a few other things what package they book really and once I've met them twice then they come up to their sort of 37 weeks or 36 and a half weeks typically um, is where I will go on call for them that means that my phone is on loud day and night that I stay somewhere within the proximity of an hour from home so I'm not going too far so I need to come back and you know I'm somewhere with the kids maybe that I'm dropping them at home they are minded with childcare, and then I can head off so that is really important my phone is on loud generally with like their own ringtone so I have like an on-call ringtone for set for my clients so it's like the really loud shouty like obnoxious you get up out of bed and you run phone out uh, phone tones so it's not like a little tinkling in the background that I could ignore or sleep through so from there on out I have all my bits ready which you'll see um some of the bits and pieces that I do later on in this like video this vlog in terms of readiness but I am ready from 36 and a half weeks and my sister who is our child wider also goes on call at that same time so from there right up until 42 43 weeks when you meet your baby I'm on call for you I'm not going anywhere and I stay there with you in that uncall period until you meet your baby so if you call me maybe at three o'clock in the morning I am up out of bed my clothes are ready and I've got all my stuff in the car from 36 and a half weeks and I will be with you as soon as possible. There are some other bits and pieces that I like to do and um, that I won't touch on now because you'll see as I go as you go through this video different things that I do you know like filling making sure that the car is filled up filled up with petrol and you know the tires are checked there's enough oil all that stuff so that it's ready to go I'm not going to end up with like a, a vehicle disaster and then I will whether you want me in 
early labor because you're just a bit anxious and you just want to go for a walk and you just want some company and maybe you need to do a little bit of massage, a little bit of hypnobirthing with you. Or if you are like, I only want you at the very last minute to just hold space and make sure that I can have as minimum interventions as possible or to you know give me like that double hip squeeze when I'm in really um you know when in labor gets really intense a lot of people will tell me exactly that equally I've had couples who say like I think something's happening but I'm not quite sure and I just really want you to be here and I will say yeah cool and they will set up a bed for me on the sofa and I will come and I will just hang out with them we'll sit we'll drink tea as like maybe labor is kind of just beginning just brewing and that way I can give them total peace of mind in knowing that I'm there and I'm present for them if things do kick off very rarely I will have to go home again but um most of the time it's you know I will listen to mum on the phone if she's having a contraction if she's having a surge listen to the intensity intensity of it listen to the sounds that she is making and I'm I'm a pretty good judge um based on that alone in terms of how um things are progressing and so I will stay with you until you have your baby giving you hands-on comfort measures um rebozo massage acupressure utilizing aromatherapy um utilizing different kind of movements and postures to help baby navigate the pelvis sometimes i'm just sitting back and i'm sitting on my hands and i'm just holding space and just giving you the positive affirmations and the words of encouragement that you need to hear because i've seen it so many times so that is huge, that in itself. And I feel, feel like I've become a lot less hands-on as my experience has grown because I know what's normal. So I will stay with you until your baby's born, until your baby is nursing well, if you plan on nursing your baby, until your baby is fed well, is settled, and you are snuggled up in bed having had, had a wee or a little shower, whatever it is you need, something to eat after baby is born, that the house has been cleaned up a little bit, and... I'm leave you snuggled up with your baby safely and say good night or good morning or whatever it might be and then I will tiptoe out and let myself out of the house. Generally I will come back the following day or if it's if the breath has gone right on into the morning I'll leave it the day after that to come and do my first postpartum visit. With this visit I will arrive with hot food, broths, teas, some sort of a sweet treat or a one-handed snack in hand already a lot of doulas don't do this a lot of doulas they are they will bring maybe some ingredients perhaps but they will prepare the food in the house of their client I feel like I can be a lot more helpful in terms of holding baby for a little bit maybe in the wrap and doing some dishes and cleaning the house a little bit or letting mum have a nap or a shower if I'm not cooking so for me it, I suppose it, it shortens the visit so it gives me um, a little bit more time with mum but also it means that I can sit and be present and really listen to her and not feel like I'm trying to do 10 other things so that is a, a choice that I make and um, you have to check in with your doula to make sure that they do something similar or how that looks for them but as a part of those prenatal visits I will be assessing like what sort of foods they like what foods don't they like have they been having particular cravings? So for that postnatal visit, I will generally send a little message and be like, hey, you know, I'm just making some yummy food up for you now. Are you craving anything in particular? What are you feeling like? And some of my clients learn through working with me that that first lesson in motherhood is being able to ask for what you need. <laughs> being clear, that clear direction and being able to say yes to the help. So I'm like that first lesson in that. I like to think that I'm the first lesson in standing up for what you, your family, your body needs in that moment. And so by the time I get to that point, a lot of mums are like, yeah, I'm craving fish. I really want something spicy. I would love like a massive fruit salad right now. And so I generally try my best to lean into those cravings and those desires as much as possible. So I will do one are uh, helping with breastfeeding also is included in there i have sometimes some postnatal massage a foot massage a foot soak i've got another video coming out about preparing for a postpartum visit and i talk about some of the things that i offer as a postnatal doula or postpartum doula but there is some of the things including like debriefing and going over how the birth experience has gone and and um, tips and tricks and settling into motherhood with one or two or multiple children 
so don't want to lean too much into postpartum right now this is a birth video um so i will see those clients once if not twice if not three times depending on how uh, breastfeeding was going or how um that transition piece is going generally i don't see postnatal clients outside of my own birth clients However, I have done in the past and many other postpartum clients, postpartum doers will do that. Um, mostly it's like a package deal. So it's a minimum of three hours um, and then it's like an hourly rate after that. And the difference between like a doula and like childcare would be, or like a night nanny, is that we look after the mother as well. So the priority is that dyad and the family unit, as opposed to just focusing solely on the baby. Not that I don't adore babies. I would have 10 hundred, 10 hundred? I would have a thousand if I could. But for me, like the real hard work is in focusing on the mama. And I find that in a lot of doulas, that is the way that they are. Anyhow, the last visit is generally something that is very teary and um, we built this real connection. It's very, yeah, it always looks a little bit different depending on who it is who I've been supporting, but it's such an intimate moment that I generally get a little bit teary saying goodbye. Um, and it's something that I'm always so grateful that I get to experience. There's two ravens outside or two um, rooks outside like fighting in the garden. That is a little intro to this video that is 15 minutes long. That is what it looks like from start to finish in terms of continuity of care. I am going to dive straight into the tips and tricks and some of the things that I do as like a doula in my everyday on call life. I hope you enjoy. So I'm just trying to get the kids in the, out the door because we're going swimming and I brought down our little stool to throw into the car. I also like to bring her little pile of things. This is one of the like D uh, inflator pumps for birth pool, um, along with like the birth pool kit that I have and the birth pool liner. And I've already dropped off the birth pool itself that I rent out. Um, so I bring that and then I also bring this like this, the, um, this is like, the pump for removing the water afterwards. So it just makes it super simple, super clean, little to no, ma no mess, super easy. But I go to these boys and this is the stool that I talk about. Which needs a little bit of a clean. Mommy, I'm gonna light the bonfire. You can light the, bon the bonfire. It's not the real one. So this is so helpful for if you want to be doing like some leaning, some lunging. If I am like sitting on it, I'm doing like some back pressure, doing that double hip knee squeeze, um, or if maybe partner wants to utilize it for a while, or if mum is going to the bathroom and wants to create space in the outlet to put her feet up on. I love this still. So one of the things that I like to do as like a little added extra for my birth client <laughs> is instead of the really like hard plastic cord clip that I feel like can really dig into baby's tummies, I get them a little embroidery soft, um, embroidered, no not embroidered, crocheted normally, um, soft cord tie, which is really nice. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. A really nice thing to <coughs> Have as a keepsake afterwards and this is from a new country a new company yeah. normally i have one of my yeah. lovely mama friends Hi. make these for me but she's just had a new baby so i'm not going to be asking that of her at the moment and i got i've got three mamas who are due at the moment so i've got three different ones three different Hi. designs Hi. oh my gosh how cute so this is design number one Look how pretty. I like to keep them gender neutral because for the most part, my clients don't tend to find out what they're having. So it's the first one. Hang on, baby. Some will sterilize these, like boil them and then put them in the freezer. Lovely sunshine. And the last one, sunshine. Yeah, Archie. Oh my gosh, this one's my favorite one. Okay, if I could pick you something in the sunshine. This one here, look at the strawberry and the daisy. Thank you, Archie, do you like that one? Is that your favorite? Daisy. Daisy, yeah. Um, how sweet. So this is from a country, uh, company called Bianatra. 
Family bien nature. All sorts of lovely, lovely, lovely things. But bits for postpartum, blessing ways, uh, women's circles. Um, they sell also like Hello. rebozos, lovely candles. Hello. I'll link them down below. But these arrived really quickly. They're from Etsy. So it's lovely to support another another company, you know, doing lovely things. A really nice alternative. And you can hold on to them for yourself afterwards. I might have to refilm this because I've got a cute little distraction. So if you are a birth doula or um, postnatal and you're thinking of a way that you can make your services extra special. <laughs> Time. Something like this is really lovely little touch. Um, I have a friend who also gets like little onesies, cute uh, like 100% cotton onesies made with like her logo saying like I'm a I'm a glow baby doula, which is just so cute. And then she gets pictures of them afterwards. These sweet juicy babies in her onesie. Um, but yeah, I'm, I feel like this is also like a lovely little touch. Let me know if you are a doula. Well, look at this chaos in the background. We're doing some moving around. What sort of little added touches or embellishments do you do to make your care different than the next person? So I thought I would just show you. I am making up a little drink for myself and taking my vitamins. And that's another thing that I do in general in terms of the stresses of being on call are a lot on your body. Oh, actually playing in the background. So I really make sure that I'm nourishing myself well so that I'm in a time of, when I'm in a time of stress, my body has reserves to pull from. So this, I know it's plastic, but uh, this giant uh, tumbler water shaker, I will fill half of up with um, pure unconcentrated orange juice and half with coconut water. And then I like to add these trace minerals in as well. And I also make sure that I maintain it keeping up with my supplements as well. I was going to show them to you. But vitamin C. So, he's just stopped banging. The vitamins that I am taking at the moment. Vitamin C for my allergies, but also really good for sex drive, collagen production. Uh, I'm always taking that. Um, like more than you think you would need, like a thousand milligrams, that's a thousand five hundred. Uh, this is the prenatal that I'm on. I always had a baby. Oh, I was recommending continuing to take your prenatal as you're breastfeeding. Want some banana? Please, mummy. This one. You want some vitamins? You definitely don't want to take them. Oh, thank you. Uh, vitamin D with K2. This is my favorite. Ah, delicious. And then I'm always taking a cod liver oil as a really good source of vitamin A. So they're the ones that I stay on top of. Thank you. I also uh, will leave a video um, regarding the supplements that I'm taking for fertility if you are curious. Thank you with all of the links down below. Hello. So please ignore the mattresses in the top of the stuff in the background we are in the process at the moment of as like a family bed situation bed sharing situation uh we need a larger space i've always joked about the idea of having just like a room full of mattresses and peter's just agreed to it so we are going upgrading from a king size bed to squishing these two single mattresses together and getting a super king sized topper to make it more comfy. So I'll keep you posted on that situation. But in view of what this video is going to be about, um, all about how I, I, I am as an on-call doula, what it's like being a birth doula, what it's like being on call, the tips and tricks that I do to help me in terms of readiness. And um, I just thought as like an, a little add-on, seeing as I just got this stuff, I recently ordered, I did a really lovely, it's like a little free aromatherapy for birth for midwives uh, course. And I will share the link to it here. It was really lovely. It was an hour long with a beautiful lady called Daisy, who's also an aromatherapist. And I learned so much, uh, mostly like I, I knew a fair bit already, but lots of lovely stuff around the use of oils for in infancy as well. So I actually ordered their like little pack. So I thought I'd just open it with you just as something fun and something different. 
So it came in this giant box. It did take a while to arrive. So if you are looking at ordering anything from doTERRA, I would just bear that in mind. I don't know whether they possibly got my address wrong. That was half of it, but it's a big old box. Ooh, that is loud. Oh, this is, so, this is it. I'm so excited. So it comes with like this big catalog. Wow. Of the doTERRA essentials. I've never bought anything from them before. I typically buy my oils from, um, I want to say it's called Atla Atlantic something, Atlantic Essentials, um, but this really appealed to me because not only was it sold as a part of through this course, you don't have to buy anything, but it was really sold to me that way, but because of the purity level, that they are actually at the level that you can actually ingest them, which I suppose anything can be toxic if you ingest too much of it but the, that really made me think okay well what's actually in all these other oils then if you can't do that um and i love the story behind the company so look into it if you're curious um but it, they said but send a lot of money like recently they've put some money into buying incubators um where the war is going on in ukraine and just really like lovely stuff a lot a lot of money back anywho long story short some of the oils that i like to use for labor and i always will bring some with me but this is so cute mm, i love how there's like so much packaging and actually really how much of it do you need but this is fantastic that it comes in a little set personally i love to use jasmine lavender um yeah, any kind of like uplifting citrusy scents for early labor. And then I love to use clary sage for like, you know, if everything needs a little bit of an oomph, if things have slowed down. I love rose oil for like that lovely grounding, heart opening effect. And um, then for nausea, like that transition, transitional nausea, drop of ginger, um, or a little bit of drop of, or a drop of lemon into the water, or into the emesis bowl, or peppermint, even just like a whiff of peppermint is... I talk about all of this in my comfort measures course and like the different the way that i use oils is different like i don't just slather mums in them ah, i want to say this is like a hundred quid which feels really good actually considering the size of these bottles so they are all mm, five mil and um yeah, very excited to use these. Some of these are more expensive oils as well. Like I got France frankincense, oregano, lemon, a deep blue, which is like a rub for like sore muscles and things. Really nice in pregnancy. Tea tree, zen jest, which is another combination, a clear air blend, peppermint, on guard is like their sort of protective defense blend, um, wild orange, clove oil, cinnamon oil, mm, and eucalyptus. Anyhow, these sound really yummy. If you want to do that lovely course, I'll leave the link to it down below. And um, I'm not like working with them or anything. I just thought it'd be fun to open these things along with you. And yeah, talk about some of the bits and pieces that I like to bring. Um, and one of the things that I thought that I would just mention quickly was I like to pop my clothes, like the clothes that I plan on wearing to a birth. I used to be a lot more like critical about what I was wearing I would wear like a uniform so to say but now I just wear something that's comfortable so it could be like jeans and a top uh typically it's not like a dress or something that I can't move really easily in because supporting someone in labor with hands-on support can be quite active and quite physical and you can get quite sweaty so I will leave clothes out so that I can literally if I get a call at three o'clock in the morning I just get up don't even have to open my eyes put my clothes on get in the car and go I also will leave my bag packed in the car including an already inflated peanut bowl um anything from like a, a safety perspective but also like the car will be fully topped up with petrol. I never leave it run empty. I always have a bottle of water with some electrolytes in it. I always have like a snack on the go. Um, and yeah, the other thing that I bring with me is like a little stool. So I showed you like my, my entire like doula bag. And recently I've added a couple of things to that, including um, the last birth that I was at. She loved like this, like really like, awesome hip pressure counter pressure on her hips where you know you're doing that double hip squeeze um and gave her a huge amount of relief but after a while it gets really tiring and so I started using my knees against her hips as she was sitting on the ball I was sitting on a higher chair and like 
giving her the pressure that way. Um, and I thought, gosh, I have nothing to sit down on for these longer births. So not only now am I bringing a stool with me, a little fold out stool, which I must grab for you and show you, but I'm also bringing with me a change of clothes. So yeah, it's the little things that make a difference, isn't it? Particularly with those really long labors. So if you're a birth doula, let me know what sort of unusual thing you bring with you. For me now, I would like to say this squatty body stool is a game changer um, and a change of clothes just to feel like fresh and lovely if you're going for like a little car nap or you've maybe gotten amniotic fluid all over you. So the next thing that I wanted to share, I'm actually going to show you in the bathroom because this is where some of this happens. And this is, I make sure to brush my teeth really well. This is a new favorite thing. The Oral-B Braun electric toothbrush and floss before I leave the house because is there anything worse than being like up close and personal and someone having bad breath? So I brush my teeth before I leave the house. I also have another new favorite thing. I am super sensitive to deodorants. I don't like to use antiperspirants, but I'm allergic to literally like the native deodorants. I'm allergic to anything that has bicarb in it. And recently, even though I'm pretty sure it has bicarb in it, I've gotten the wild, this is like their jasmine and patchouli scent, I think. That's just me making a wild guess. Or does it smell vanilla -y? There's a coconut and vanilla one that I've tried before, but this is jasmine and something. It's so lovely and smell test. I've had, you can't see, see smell of vision. I have been out in the garden sweating all day long and I've had like the stress sweats from when the kids have been having tantrums and meltdowns and I smell absolutely fine. Game changer. Another wee thing that I like to mention is that I struggle really badly with allergies. So during the summer, if like the pollen count is supremely high, I will be like a snotty, sniffly mess. And particularly at the moment, because they're requiring mask wearing in a lot of hospitals, you can't blow your nose quite as easily. You can't, I don't want to be like sniffing and snotting all over my clients. So I make sure and take an antihistamine before I leave. But I also will like, if I'm taking a shower in the morning or a shower, like if I have time, if it's a first time mum and she's an early neighbor, before I leave the house to go and see a client, I will rinse all the pollen off me and then get like a balm of some kind. So I've got a lovely like tallow balm that my friend has made me or like even like a Vaseline would be fine. And I will run it all over the inside of my nostrils and that forms like this lovely barrier. And it's been a game changer. It's so lovely. Um, some other things that I've been doing for my allergies, if you're curious, is I've been taking nettle and quercetin, quercetin in like quite high doses and vitamin C, a thousand milligrams a day. That's really helped. I also have found the, um, like wearing big, like Paris Hilton style wraparound sunglasses really lovely and protective but you can see like my eyes are really bloodshot um and there's a setting in the car where it just recycles the air like it doesn't obviously it doesn't sound very nice but it recycles the air that you breathe in as opposed to letting in all the air from outside so that's been really nice and that's definitely I think improved my symptoms this year Another thing that I will do before you can see my husband, hear my husband in the background unpacking shopping. Um, another thing that I will do before I leave the house to go to a client alongside brushing my teeth, getting dressed, grabbing a coffee, making sure that I've got something to eat in my tummy is I will nurse the babies. So I'm still feeding both of the boys um, breastfeeding. And so I, it's really important to me that I feed them from like a what feels good to me mama mama heart perspective but also that um, I don't get sick and as a lactation consultant it doesn't mean that I'm immune to getting mastitis and getting unwell and milk being a live substance it does not like to sit still so if I'm missing a feed if I'm on a long birth yes like keeping the breast moving doing some breast gymnastics doing some like lymphatic drainage massage if I can um and sometimes I will have to go out to the car and pump but if I nurse the boys before I leave it means that I can stretch out that period of time I get a lot of questions as well on like how I manage on call life with childcare and I am so lucky because my sister actually will go on call with me so I let her know that I've got a client coming up I pay her for her on call 
B and she has her phone on loud then my husband will do the overnights and then he she will come over and take uh, take over for him once he has to go to work or to college and then they mind that between the two of them until I come home. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. This is like my little outro and I hope that you will stick around for some more of my videos. Thank you so much for being here.